Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Dialogue with Guru Yogi Shivan. We have been discussing uh, the Bhagavad Gita and today we've come to culminating the whole discussion. We've discussed important characters, we've discussed how the Mahabharata relates to our normal life, how the characters and their destinies and how they play out is really significant of, of our lives and how it can play out depending on what characters we pick on whether we choose to be you know the greedy Duryodhan going against the law of nature or the blind Dhritarashtra it kind of the, the main essence of the Mahabharata was the Bhagavad Gita which basically says that when you're done with all of this when you're done with this whole give and take of the world and you and you're seeking something further something deeper that's when you know Arjun becomes seeking and comes to Krishna and says hey what is the point of all of this and he guides him with the path of yoga and says all of this is one reality but there is something you need to experience beyond this and that is the cosmic the cosmic truth and uh, the path of yoga and guides Krishna, uh, Krishna guides Arjun on the path of Dharma which can be achieved through the path of yoga so uh, that's what you know this is what the culmination has been this is what our journey has been and i highly encourage all of you to kind of go back and uh, look at the previous episodes of the dialogue they are on youtube as well as on you know on my instagram channel and today keep your questions on guys because we're going to be taking q a guruji is here so i'm just going to add him on Pranam Guruji. Pranam, how are you? I am very well, Guruji. Can you hear me all right? Now I can hear you. Uh, I was not seeing your, uh, you know, life. I was checking for that. I was waiting. No, for so that. Guruji, okay. I actually messaged you. It was my bad. I was running a little bit late this morning, Guruji. Oh, okay, it, okay, okay. That was just my setup was taking time. Ah, I wanted to just make sure whether it yes. was from yes. our side or not. No problem. We just introduced, you know, uh, we spoke about, so Guruji, we're going to go into question and answer session today, have everyone who's listened in so far come up with their questions. And I spoke about how Mahabharata and the destinies of the characters are kind of indicative of, of how our destiny, of how our lives can play out, given the path we choose, you know, whether we choose to be Duryodhana, we choose to be the blind Dhritarashtra and looking at how their lives turn out is an indication of where we can find ourselves if we choose those paths. And then we spoke about uh, coming to the Ranbhumi, to, Kur to Kurukshetra, and the conversation between Krishna and Arjun, the seeker and the truth and the source. And Guruji, you know, before we start, I'd like you to kind of, again, just where we ended last time, talk about it once again, the essence of the Bhagavad Gita and how the path of yoga was unfolded or talked about and what that path is. And then we'll go into Q&A. Yeah. Bhagavad Gita. The word meaning Bhagavad Gita is the divine song. Bhagavad means derived from the God himself. Gita is a melodious, meaningful uh, song. So when we see the Guru Vandana, before we get into any one of our studies in India, ancient India, we will have a Guru Vandana. There we can see Parthaya Pradibodhida Bhagavata Narayanena Swayam Vyasena Gredida Purana Munida Mathe Mahabharatam. What does it mean? Like a God himself is talking to Parthan, the person who is controlling his prana and focused his mind. Yadha prana, tadha mana. If you do pranayama and try to focus your mind or focus your prana in one point, immediately mind will also be focused in a particular point. So anybody who is having a concentrated Focus the mind. There you can hear Bhagavad Gita, the sound of God. 
that means we have to learn to listen our silence shri adinadhena sapada kodi laya prakara adhidajayanti nada anusandhana kamekameva manya mahe manya tamam layana swatmarama maharshi wrote in hatha yoga pradipika so now everybody is practicing hatha yoga so it is written by swatmarama maharshi there he is emphasizing this point there are 1 crore 25 lakhs mothers for attaining liberation but nada anusandhana kameva meva listen the sound of silence the brahma nada is being accepted by myself it's a declaration from the master this is the word silence is the word of god what we should do we should focus our mind within the self or within ourselves and listen we can hear bhagavad gita so who heard that urana munina an ancient sage heard that then he codified this one fixed this one in the middle of mahabharatam urana munina madhi mahabharatam again what is the name of guru who heard that vyasan in sanskrit vyasam means you know expansion or the uh, the area of or the the what we can say like a, technically if there is a glow if you want to see both sides what will say it's not perimeter um if you write, uh, draw a circle mm-hmm. and you connect one end to the radius. other end okay. radius radius yes so the radius so what we should do actually we have to understand how far we can expand our limit or the limitation of our senses expand your intellectual plane expand to the infinity there you can obliterate the limitations of your sense so that's what we call vyasa means expansion infinite expansion so when we transcend the limitations of the mind or the senses we will get connected to infinity so vyasan means the person who could obliterate his uh, limitations of the senses is called vyasan so anybody who is listening this bhagavad gita and bring it into practice that is what is called that person is called vyasan there is not a particular person simply sitting somewhere and uh, writing all these things everybody is having a hidden vyasan within ourselves so we should explore that purana munina the traditional wisdom we have to explore this is the meaning of bhagavad gita so listen the gita the divine song from within for that we should focus our five organs within the self there if you uh, mature enough to listen the inner sound then definitely you will have questions to be clarified so bhagavad gita is a conversation between the seeker and the guru so seeker is qualified again we have to keep that point in our mind among kauravas and pandavas only one person was selected to Uh, reveal the gita so you can see the arrangement two armies mm-hmm. arranged on both sides in the battlefield and they were about to start the war then this person the main role arjuna was the main person whom the pandava side was really relying on so he said with that great valor he told krishna as his chariot eh hey krishna take the chariot right in the middle of the war field then i want to see who is against who is standing against me to kill me or to be killed by me so like that so our positive and negative thoughts are there. so this guy is taken over there the moment he saw the real enemies actually they were not his enemies 
all his relatives, including his Pidamaha. There he got confused. There his first question uh, I know, arose. He said, Hey, Dushtemam Sujanam Krishna. Hey, all my, my relatives, my, my cousins, my Pidamaha, my Guru. Yes. Vitsum Samupastida. But they want to fight with me. Siddhanti Mamaga. Hey, Arjuna. Uh, Krishna, my my body get you know shivering. I am sweating. I, I you know my face is drying. So he was explaining that. Then there he start asking his questions to be clarified. Then if you go through Gita, immediately you will come to know the battlefield will fade away. Slowly you will come to know battlefield will not be in picture there. Mm -hmm. Then there is a direct conversation between the seeker. The Shishya, the disciple and the master. Same way, when we slowly look inside, our external problems will be vanished. You can see your maybe some friends may be fighting against you. Yes, backbiting, then stabbing from back, being cheated. So when you come to know, oh, one of my good friends, so he or she cheated me, betrayed me, then we want to fight back. When he see the more, when we come face to face, we become sometimes we get confused. Why should I irritate? Why should I destroy this person? Why should I file a case against him? So all questions will come. This is what is the state of Arjuna, despondency of Arjuna. So there we will become real Arjuna. We don't know what to do. Then we may go to a counselor or a doctor, or a psychiatrist, or a psychologist. But the best psychologist or the best uh, guide for us to listen the inner voice. That is what is called the divine sound from within. So it must be a daily practice to learn how to listen the inner voice. There Bhagavad Gita will be revealed. Then we will come to know this apparent universe. The world or the problems which were really hurting us will fade away as the battle failed when Gita was, you know, like uh, proclaimed. So, slowly, this world will become secondary. Our primary idea, primary attention will go to our heart. There, we will listen the sound of silence. Nada anusandhana kamekameva. Listen the inner silence. This is the silence, the sound of silence. Then we will be guided by the divine chariot, Krishna. Krishna is the cosmic consciousness. Arjuna is our limited personal uh, ego. The feeling of I, me and my. This is the essence of Bhagavad Gita. Everybody can listen to the Gita from within. Absolutely. Okay. I'm going to summarize that in the meantime. Yeah. Everybody, you have your questions, start listing them. The session is about the Q&A, it's about taking your questions because for the first six sessions, we kept it, uh, we kept it as a dialogue between Guruji and me. And uh, just to summarize what Guruji said, is that this whole story of uh, Dharma Kshetra versus Kurukshetra, right? The concept of living through the vices, versus living through the path of righteousness. And this battle begins, right, between the Kaurav and the Pandav, between, why, you know, what's, what's a vice and what's right. And then uh, the world of the senses, which is outside, which we, which we can constantly engage in, we can either choose to act through these lower emotions, like the greed and anger and going against nature, or we can act through dharma. Even when you're acting through dharma, like the Pandavas did, they came to a point in the battlefield because you were living in the world. And in that battlefield, Arjuna questioned that, hey, I have lived my life in a right manner. I've lived in the path of righteousness. And I'm still, I still have this dilemma where I'm stuck here on Kurukshetra fighting my uncles and my family and my cousins. What is this about? And what's to be noted is Arjuna, even though his all five, even Dharmaputra, was uh, was following the path of dharma but arjuna was selected to you know for this discourse of the bhagavad gita and part of that was his focus that 
the the attention and the curiosity and the focus that Arjuna had, the others lacked in that same extent. So he was ready, he was right, he was focused, and he was on the path of dharma, which this becomes the precursor to even become recipients of the Gita, right, Guruji? This is a precursor. This is a prerequirement that if we want to even follow this path, that's why it's yam and niyam first that you follow the path of dharma, and um, and you stay focused with it and stay committed to it, and then we come to a point when we are, we have the ability to listen to that Bhagavad Gita. And what Krishna explains to Arjun is not really a manual of how to live life, but the concept, right? That the only way to explore the world within is by disconnecting from the world outside. So expanding what you can see beyond your senses. That Vyasa means expansion. And uh, that when you do Chitta Vritti Nirodha, and for the next few sessions, you know, for the next seasons, we're actually going to be talking about the whole path in detail, step by step. Um, but for this session, you know, starting with that disengagement of senses and becoming curious on the path of righteousness with what lies within, we are able to hear the sound of silence within, the cosmic truth within. And that is the Bhagavad Gita. And uh, we all have the ability to do that. And it is through the path of righteousness, focus, and then disconnection of the senses. And um, that's the discourse that's given by Krishna to Arjun, guiding him on this path. And as you get into the Bhagavad Gita, the battlefield fails, so it fades out. The battlefield is fading out and just this reality exists. Yes. Okay, great. It's funny, Guruji, nobody has decided to put any questions today. And every day when we're not taking questions, we have questions. So guys, I highly encourage you, you know, for all of those who have participated, who have had questions, bring them on. Any question is fine. This is your chance to ask those questions. So Guruji, then you tell me that while Arjuna is on the battlefield, right? While people ask questions, let me ask you mine. While he's on the battlefield and he hears this, and we want to hear it from you because your interpretations are so great. What is his reaction then? What is he thinking in his mind? And how does that play out in the war? Um, how does he reconcile the fact that he's doing this now with his relatives? I mean, I didn't get your question properly. Like uh, Arjuna listened to Krishna. Yes. Then, right? how he then he has to reconcile me? with the fact that, okay, I am here and I'm doing this. I'm fighting this, this battle with all, you know, I'm fighting this war with all my cousins and uncles and relatives. Hmm. And what, uh, what, how does Arjuna then act in his mind? What is his mind state after having listened to Krishna? Yes. Then you can see in the Mahabharata, after being advised and encouraged, invigorated by Krishna, then he was really, you know, storming into the, uh, the war field with a clear, focused mind. He was just hitting the targets. So that was happened in the war. Same way, that is representing the war of life. If we have clarity in our thought and uh, properly advised from within, then there is no confusion at all. Each and every action, I mean that action is represented as every arrow which was just sent from his bow was hitting the right targets. And he was sending that, he was doing that without any kind of confusion. And he didn't have any kind of uh, guilty feeling. And he was not, you know, feared of the after effect of killing these people, his elders, his gurus. Because Krishna, Krishna very clearly told him that you are not killing anybody. You cannot even kill even a blade of grass. If it is meant by nature, the law of nature, it will be happening. So now these people are already killed by nature. Or he was saying that it's everybody is being killed 
by me krishna was representing himself as the cosmic law you are only being used as a tool to execute the action there he says the the uh, value or the inevitability of karma nahi kachit chanam api jadu tishtat akarma krut he arjuna nobody or nothing in this world is sitting idle we may think that oh we can close our eyes and simply sit idle no our heart is beating our uh, lungs are functioning blood is circulating uh, cells are being the you know um uh, what is it spirit and the new, new new cells are being uh, created the yeah. destruction and construction is an incessant action so these things should be understood when he was having that clarity he became a successful person in the war field so war field is our life field absolutely so once we start listening krishna from within the cosmic sound the law of nature then we will not hesitate to engage ourselves into all actions now what's happening we have that false ego that i am doing instead of having that feeling that i am doing that thought will be replaced by being done through me that's all then we will not have any kind of confusion in our life even from a small incident to the highest case so there will be a clarity whether i do it or not what is meant to happen will happen so i am not doing it's being done through me this is the revelation this is what happened in arjuna then he was successful in each and every corner of the war field so true yes we should also be like that the moment we get clarity from within we will have a different attitude in life but there will not be any change in external life because external life is already designed by cosmic law which we call destiny technically what's happening in reality everybody is fighting against the destiny which is a vain effort nobody can succeed fighting in you know with a destiny so understand and accept destiny then you will become the designer of your destiny because you know that the knowledge is power knowledge will make you free that is what had happened in arjuna and after that arjuna was winning the war great so once arjuna heard what he did the the source of the truth when he heard that mm -hmm. then he got more clarity and all his actions became nishkam karma which means that all his actions did not have a charge of any emotion you know it did not have a charge of guilt did not have a charge of anger of revenge of vengeance he was acting from a place of clarity and purity and when we can sort that out through listening through our own sound of silence becoming aware of the cosmic truth then there is more clarity and there is more focus in all our actions at the same time all our actions are without a charge charge is any strong emotion that drives our action and when we can act without that significant charge all the actions become effortless they become more flow they become easier they uh, and, and they become accurate and uh, you can uh, you can uh, you can survive in the world you can function in the world in a much more easier manner is it very noisy guru ji is is the noise the bother no no perfect yeah. okay okay so um, basically the, that's the way right and i can vouch for this i see that in my own life guruji as i have started my practice that they make it out to be that life is supposed to be very hard functioning and doing everything right is supposed to be very difficult but the truth is the more clarity you have within and the less charged you feel within for your actions the easier the actions become yes and yes. Uh, and and that's what happened to arjuna on the battlefield it became so easy for him guruji when i one minute, one moment guruji
sorry kuji my girl so we keep a lot of sound outside and i have to tell it okay so and 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 then the actions become effortless and uh, it becomes easy so guys this is a very big takeaway right it's not supposed to be nishkam karma is easier than karma with a charge actually there is no difference between karma and nishkama karma right karma, karma is a cosmic rule law which is being happening without any one of our control true so nishkama karma or kamya karma i may feel that now i am talking to you if i feel that i talk to you because i know these things that is kamya karma but if i come to know that my body my vocal cords my prana is being used to deliver these words for the listeners when i come to know that that is nishkama karma actually only one thing is happening karma alone is existing but we can label it as kamya karma or nishkama karma or one person came to me asked for some food he was saying that i am hungry please give me something to eat and i give some food to him that is the karma which i am doing it can be labeled as two kamya and nishkam if i feel that yes i had this food i am giving the food to this guy so he will become happy if i feel that i that is a kamya karma if i feel that that poor man also created by nature by the law food is created by nature my body created by nature so this body is being used to contribute to give the food to this from a source to b source in the nature i am only a two if i have that kind of attitude that is what is called as karma karma either i like or not if that person is supposed to be fed by me it will happen so i can label it i did or it happened it's up to me but when i feel that i did my ego will create certain toxins in my system the feeling of i immediately will activate some glands which are not very necessary for us so keep activating these glands will make the blood toxic when i have a toxified blood i will be vulnerable to all kinds of diseases physical mental social problem so who is creating a hell or a heaven my own attitude that is why masters taught this technique only one technique how to meditate for emphasizing or establishing this technique and make people understand the the value and the necessity of this thing they started explaining in different different ways so when real serious people came across the uh, teachings they started asking for clarification so this millions of questions were raised for clarification then masters started giving answers for that as the answer for the clarification like that we got uh, this you know millions of books including bhagavad gita this is why it is clearly stated in almost all upanishads and puranas agasha paditam toyam yatha gachadi sagaram what does it mean the rain falls by drops how many drops are coming as rain on earth nobody knows how to less but from sky is rain drops are coming down but every drop is being collected through small streams then big uh, you know canals or the um, uh, rivers then all waters are leaving to so guiding being guided to the ocean end of the day ocean is there that is the source of the rain drops 
same way countless questions and answers are there but all these rain drops the drops of knowledge are being guided to inner observation which we label as dhyana or meditation so if we do that we will come to know the significance of these rain drops means the thoughts from where the thoughts are being developed exactly from the ocean itself the ocean by the heat it is taken up as the clouds then the clouds are being in a cool it is falling back on earth as drops again it is going back to its ocean so cycle is complete so we start asking who am i i have millions of thoughts that millions of thoughts will be collected back to one central thought that who am i then pranam manu deendam milayneyadyu moksham sagachchadi master is saying this in hade yoga pratibhiga these millions of thoughts are being developed because of your mind mind is being initiated or activated through prana so control your prana through pranayam then what will happen pranam mano dwe with the mana means mind prana and mind will merge each other then moksham sagachadi where the, we will under you know come to know the ocean of life earlier we were struggling with uh, millions of drops we were counting oh that drop is bigger than this drop this is not the right way i expected so like that thoughts are really countless when we take everything to the channel then the channel will take you to ocean we should practice this this is the essence then the final answer is there you started from outside slowly entered inside once you will come to know who you are there will be no in or out then what else nobody knows that is why experience is experience about the infinity is beyond our mind yoga chitta vritti niro great guruji great now we have a bunch of questions guruji so i'm going to start taking those questions can you please elaborate so guruji we have a lot of questions so let's take as many as we can now um i have painted the first one can you please elaborate on the sound of silence is it nada yoga vj is asking yes exactly nada yoga it, it can be called as nada yoga sura yoga lay yoga kundalini yoga everything is really nada nada means inner sound we should be able to listen the inner nada it's uh technically it is called ajaba gayatri there is a gayatri mantra surya gayatri om bhargava swaha tat savidurvarenya bhargo devasya dhimahi you might have heard about it. that is the mantra for chant but there is one more gayatri which is called ajaba gayatri the gayatri mantra which is not supposed to be recited chant it should be in the silence we can listen that mantra in the silence that is what is called nada yoga then we will immerse ourselves into that sound indriyana manonadha manonadastu maruda indriya means our sensory world then the senses are being controlled by mind indriyana manona organs are being controlled by mind manonadastu maruda mind is being managed by maruda prana marudasya layo nada the prana will dissolve in nada the cosmic sound sa layo nada mashrada everything will be dissolved in the sound itself this is written in uh, hatha yoga pradi there is another book called shiva surodaya there in a different way it is said ब्रह्मांडकंडपिंडाद्या 
Pindanda, the micro. Both are developed from Sura, Sound, Nala. The creation, maintenance, and destruction are happening in this sound of ocean. So everything is evolved from this cosmic sound and will be dissolved back into that sound. Like uh, in uh, Bible, you can see Jesus was proclaiming that in the beginning there was word. Word was with God and word was God. What does it mean? Everything evolved from a sound, existing in sound and dissolving sound. Modern science is saying that even though we don't have you know, solid proof about it, but still the claims are there. Everything is evolved from a big bang, big bang theory. That is also a sound. Then that big bang definitely will lead to a big crunch. In Sanskrit it is called Mahavisbodana big bang and Mahasankhada big crunch. So how the black holes are created. So it's another one. So these things are either high energy physics or supernatural experience. That's all. Absolutely, Guruji. Everything, the sound of silence, when that merges with the prana, and you know, the prana is focused on that sound of silence and they come together, then you can have that true cosmic experience. Uh, whether it's the Big Bang Theory, whether it's the Bible, it's everything originated from that sound. Us putting our attention to that sound, that cosmic sound of silence, leads to that bigger discovery. Uh, yes. So Guruji, I'm going to take the next question. How do we remain dharmic in our uh, in our thoughts when when those around us are choosing a dharmic actions? And second question. How do we remain dharmic in our thought and action when those around us are choosing a dharma? That's that's Krishna's dilemma. Um, I didn't get the question clearly. Okay. So Guruji, the question is actually, you probably answered this question because it is really the Bhagavad Gita, the answer to this question. And the question was, when everybody else around us is choosing a dharma, how do we continue to remain dharmic? But it's the same. I think, I think you've already answered this question, Guruji, because that's exactly but, uh, what... Yeah. Arjun's dilemma. But others cannot do anything with uh, the question is having little, you know, you know, like uh, it's not clear by using the word. Dharma cannot be taken by anyone. Else. Why? Dharma cannot be taken or decided by anyone else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nobody can affect dharma because everybody is existing in dharma okay people can put their vibes their thoughts to somebody's mind suppose i am surrounded by 10 people i guess we've lost uh, kaguruji has lost connection for some reason uh, Let's wait for him to come back. But I think, uh, can, can you guys hear me though? Can you tell me if you can hear me? I hope I have not lost connection. Can you all hear me? Yeah, I think, I think my connection is okay. Somebody can let me know. It would be great. Uh, so we've lost Guruji's connection. Uh, I'm going to try and wait for a couple of minutes and see if he can come back on. But you can hear. Thank you, VJ. Thank you, dear. So basically, I think what Guruji explained was exactly, I think, the Bhagavad Gita, right? That uh, if, you're in, if you're in the righteous path and Arjun was on the righteous path and those around him were not. And uh, I don't know what he, you know, he has another explanation, which he's also getting to with the intent. And that intent of dharma, right? You're still existing in the world. You're still doing. But what is the intent you put into it? As the Pandavas put their pure intent each time, that they acted, they were still able to fight the war, but from a place of pure intent, from the place of that intent. Uh, so others, what they do, 
really right. This is the dilemma of life. There is no obligation for them to follow the same path of dharma. Uh, it's it's they they're not it's it's not that if you follow it, I'll follow it. What we do defines us, and I think that's the one thing at least I really hold close to my heart. I said what I will choose to do will define me. If others around me are acting in ways which which I question, it defines them. But to reciprocate an action which I don't fundamentally agree with in the same manner is going to change who I am. And uh, I think really defining your own self and uh, really understanding who is it that you want to be and really staying with it, right? Constantly evaluating all our actions against that. And what actions am I going to keep putting to become become this version of myself, this higher version of myself that I want to do. And of course we deviate, but I think that is a practice that I have continued uh, to follow and it has really, really helped me out. So, um, you know, I'm gonna wait for a couple of moments and see if Guruji can join because I know we have some, we have a few more questions. And if we don't, we can always come back and do this again. But I hope, I think, this for me has been extremely useful. Uh, the whole discussion on the Bhagavad Gita. Now I'm almost tempted again, as Guruji suggested, for all those of you who asked what version of the Bhagavad Gita, there is one written by Swami Vivekananda. Um, and that narration is something that Guruji recommends. I'm tempted to go and buy that myself again, even though I have many more detailed versions. But I want to read that again because I feel like uh, that is going to, you know, now to understand, to look at each, each character and say, so what is this character significant of greed, jealousy, going against, and what is the consequence that he experiences in the Mahabharata? When we follow that path, those are the likely consequences that we are supposed to follow, that we can, that we might. And you know, I remember even as a child, when I was watching the Mahabharata with my family, uh, the Pandavas were always landing up in trouble, in exile, in, in the war in injustice. But even at that point, I felt like they were much more peaceful. And I remember questioning that. And that's what Guruji said in his previous talks, that when you're on the path of dharma, there is going to be peace. Uh, even if even if people around you are not going to, just knowing. Uh, I also see my own dad acting like that. I've seen him his whole life acting always with that path of righteousness. and. Uh, it, it, it used to be frustrating sometimes as a child, but it's extremely, uh, it makes me very proud. And it's also shown me how, where his life has taken him, uh, which is great places in the worldly sense, as well as inside, because he's been on this path and followed this part of the Pandavas of righteousness. So guys, if anybody wants to say anything, uh, say it. Otherwise, I think I'm not sure if Guruji will be able to come back on today. It's already 10.20. We have about maybe 10 more minutes. Oh, he's right here. So let's give this a shot again. And hopefully it's going to work. Guruji. Sorry. No problem. There was a power, there was a power failure. Mm. And uh, yeah, once the changeover comes, the Wi-Fi will take few minutes to recover. No worries, Guruji. Luckily, I can keep talking 24 hours, Guruji. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, okay. So, Guruji, yeah. now we have... So, let us continue that, the Dharma. Yes. Dharma is a cosmic law which cannot be influenced or changed or even known in our ordinary level of consciousness. Mm -hmm. When dharma manifests, we call it karma. So people around me, there are 10 people surrounded me, then they can send 10 kinds of thoughts as karma. I will be influenced because my mind is reactive, responsive. But if we know, if I know how to manage my hormones, I will decide which kind of response has to be from my side. There, if we succeed in, in that control, that is what is called a liberated life, given mode. If we don't know that, we are having that slavery, life of 
slavery because everybody can influence us just for example if i tell something good about you my sounds will fall in your uh, ears and the ear drum will be vibrating and uh, according to that vibration the sound waves will be converted into some kind of magnetic waves to go to the memory then you will have, your intelligence will have an analysis and go get into a conclusion that these are good words in favor you know favorable for me like that then your pituitary gland or your pineal gland will be activated you feel nice but if my words are categorized or analyzed and concluded that this is against me it is questioning my prestige and my personality then that conclusion will activate the adrenal gland adrenaline will be produced and your bp will shoot up and you will become angry mm -hmm. so same source from my mouth words are coming but response was in two ways so where is the difference the process taking place within you is having the response this is why as an essence or advice in gita very clearly krishna stated that sama shatra ucha mitra tatha mana apamaneyo shida ushna sukha dukeshu sama sanga vivarjida means if you want to be successful tulya ninda asur mauni santushto ena kena anigeda bhaktiman me priyo nara the essence is a person who is capable of managing shatru mitra enemy and friend then criticism and uh, you know uh, appraisal then uh, heat and cold hmm. everything this opposite has all to the be. dualities dualities has to be managed beautiful actually krishna is not advising to eliminate all thoughts and be empty in your mind no meditation is not for emptying the mind many people are really mistaken in that yes. they want to experience they want to experience oneness yes. they want to experience emptiness of mind that is happening only in sound sleep meditation is not for emptying the mind meditation is for managing the thoughts absolutely so if you are capable of managing your thoughts no gland will be functioning the way it want everything will function the way you want so if somebody is you know praising you you should not be carried away with that if somebody is criticizing you abusing you you should not be you know like a, out of control on that then if you know how to manage this both sukha dukha pain and pressure love it shatru shatru mitra friend and enemy both should be managed then anigeda bhaktiman if a person establishing himself into that level of management priyo nara in the success of so this is what yeah so great guru ji that's a, and you know i want to tell everybody as in the future episodes and the future seasons we will talk much more about this guru ji goes into great details of how everything is controlled by these glands the entire chemical environment and to me that has been the biggest learning of my life uh, you know speaking with guru ji and understanding trying to understand that but uh, once again you say the same thing guru ji and it's directly from our shastras that how sensitive or volatile our glands yes. are to external reality right the the goal of meditation mm -hmm. is to make them less volatile to less reactive to the external reality and external mm -hmm. reality could be good or bad but good something you know one gland responds exaggerated in an exaggerated manner something bad another gland responds in an exaggerated manner through meditation through kumbhak through chitta vritti nirodha putting your senses in words what we are able to do is regulate our own chemical environment so our glands are not going crazy with everything that happens outside and that allows us then to manage all of these dualities of the world that we live in the moment you can manage all of these dualities our existence and our experience in the world changes yes glands are 
the real decision makers. So, like our limbs. Suppose we have two hands. If if my friend is approaching me, either I should say namaste or I should hug him. It should the hand should work as per my wish and command. But if my hands are working, you know, beyond my control, instead of hugging my friend, I am you know stabbing him or punching him. I mean. i want to hug him but the hand is punching him what will be my what will be the condition of my life same way our glands are like our other limbs they should behave they should act the way we wish so somebody tries to irritate me agitate me then the adrenaline is being you know active i should have the control like my hand my hand hand want to punch somebody then i will tell myself hey you are not supposed to do thing by yourself obey my command then hand is relaxed then i tell this guy instead of punching him go down to him then the hands are doing that same way when adrenaline when adrenal start gland uh, start functioning you should have the command over that hello i will tell you when you should be at suppose a dangerous situation is there then you need more power you need more glucose then let adrenal gland function it will produce more adrenaline then more glucose will be pumped in blood you will be very active in that situation as per the demand of your inner but here what's happening all our glands are functioning beyond our control so one person just stared at me without my permission adrenal gland produced adrenaline then i was asking myself Hey, I, ask, I was asking to that guy, and I became furious. That means I am out of control. This is what is happening. So that person is only a me to make me either happy or unhappy. The decision, the action, should be from within. So ten people are surrounding me. Ten are sending their energy. It is not their success if I become agitated or irritated. that's my weakness of managing my system yoga is making everybody successful from within that's why prana apana yoga granthi union between prana and apana is yoga when that union takes place granthi gland will be under our control if glands are under your control you will win your life that is the ultimate aim of yoga ultimately and that yoga, yes that yoga is explained through the stories and dialogues that's all bhagavad gita is one of these many dialogues people think there is only one bhagavad gita in uh, mahabharata itself many gitas are there vidura gita is there then uh, um, Dhar- uh, dharmaputra gita somewhere is there so many many gitas we can hear yeah ashtavakra gita is there then uh, uh, many are there like uh, yeah. but everybody is just mentioning or emphasizing the inevitability the significance and the essentiality of daily practice nitya puja great guruji guys there will be the million dollar lies guruji will keep coming back to this as we go on in our episodes that yeah. how is the regulation of your chemical environment inside you know we all intellectualize and try and control our actions in a very rigid manner try and control our life around us all we need to do is become the master of our own chemical environment and everything else that comes easy so guruji one last question before we end and it's a very good mm-hmm. one uh, swasthya ankita asks that when bhishma pitama made his vow mm-hmm. and he followed mm-hmm. it with, without considering once So in all of Mahabharata, it said, right? When somebody gives their word, whether Bhima mm-hmm. gave his word to tear Dushashan's heart, anybody mm-hmm. when they give their word, and they gave it in a moment of intensity, you know, when Bhishma gave it, when Bhima gave his word to Draupadi, mm-hmm. it was in a moment of intensity, and mm-hmm. when they give their word, they are following it without considering whether it's. on the path of righteousness or not 
what is that guru ji i mean is the wow really so much more important than the path of righteousness who is deciding righteousness that is the question what is the definition of righteousness a suppose an eagle eagle has a baby eagle and baby eagle is starving so eagle wants to feed the uh, baby eagle so it caught one mouse okay then actually that mouse is dying it is being converted into the food of the baby eagle so which is right and which is wrong but but guru ji like when duryodhan did the you know uh, in the when they were gambling right and uh, draupadi was insulted in front of the whole court that was yes. clearly an act of of there was not an act of dharma and we talked about it in our own sessions right guru ji so that there are some acts that are clearly you know where you also said that if you exploit nature if you exploit mother nature mother nature will come to haunt you so those are acts which are not acts of righteousness and duryodhan represents that vice duryodhan represents that greed and uh, so when that happened uh, what that's not an act of righteousness but if somebody has given a vow and the vow is is out of greed is out of anger is out of revenge then it's not coming from a nishkam place it's coming from a place of just asakti but again that's what i say who is creating sakti and asakti that is the question these are all you know situations created for thinking like contemplating this is not a real story or an incident these are all created situation formulated situations for activating our power of mind to think contemplate then conclude that's what we should understand so bishma wrote that i will be against all you know like a uh, illegal things anything against a lady i will be uh, protecting that lady but he is the guy two times made the real mistake he abducted amba and when in uh, this one uh, raubadi was insulted he kept silent so that time he was having his own justifications this is what exactly we all are doing we may do something i will give you one of my personal example my mother i was so close to her and she loved me very much so when i became self sufficient i was always aware of her needs as a putra as a son i was supposed to provide everything according to my analysis so i was doing to satisfy my intellect and my inner conscience but my mother she was having a personal interest that my elder sister's daughter is slightly you know weak mentally slightly weak so grandma was having a little leniency to that girl mm. so she wanted to take many things from him and provide to her granddaughter mm-hmm. so that is her justification so i have to my mother i said see being her uncle i will take care of her so long as i am having my own uh, you know income and my you know like well definitely i will take care of my care of my niece, niece. don't worry but she was not satisfied with that she wanted to get more from me and give to her so there i objected so which is right which is wrong from my mother's point of view she was having her own explanation and justification from a son's point of view i have my own justification so who can make clear that who is right who is wrong then we have to go for a generalization this is what is meant by sama shatrauja mitravaja you cannot label either this person uh, you know enemy or a friend sometimes now like many times we discuss covid virus for me covid virus is a wonderful friend it is making everybody you know like a immune against 
the coming challenges the future challenges so i consider it as a friend which is coming to us to help us to immunize us but many most of the people are thinking oh covid i should kill i should take vaccination eradicate the virus who can eradicate something in this nature the same uh, you know science is saying this energy can neither be created nor be destroyed if one form of energy changes it will appear in another form so who can kill a virus you know permanently that way if you suppress or kill the virus right now it will have its own variant in future so that's why we call it virus it will keep on mutating so what we should understand is there is no perfect answer for uh, this kind of question so duality cannot be verified and labeled as good and bad because so long as we have two brains like right brain and left brain one is muscular which is very intuitive other one is highly you know judgmental so once we have these two brains there is no ultimate answer for a question but we can have the middle path we can manage this one to understand the significance and necessity of this existence and go beyond it that is beyond our brain when we reach there no question is there to be answered okay great guruji and now everybody as we come to an end of the bhagavad gita the more you listen to these talks again and again the more insights you can find and get and uh, all of the next episodes are actually going to be talking about how to live this life somebody had a question on death we're going to be taking birth we're going to be taking death we're going to be taking how to operate in the world we're going to take the path of yoga we're going to understand kundalini follow us from season to season dm me and let me know what it is that you want to hear about we will be with in there will be definite sessions sessions we have a few more episodes left in this season i want to talk about indian rituals and their significance we will continue to do that i will see you all next wednesday again thank you so much guruji guruji for this wonderful wonderful session pranam guruji pranam thank you pranam to all thank you